Hello, in this video, we're going to be demonstrating some of the basic capabilities of the Digi XB Pro S3B radio units. These are serial data radio modules that are able to transmit and receive. They're fairly inexpensive. And I've got a photograph of one of them shown right here, to give you an idea of what it looks like. This module right here is the actual radio unit. You can see the long wire antenna sticking out like that. It's about the size of a large postage stamp, as you can see from me holding the larger board. And it's plugged into this larger board that's meant for development and testing use. That larger board provides a convenient USB connection and some power conversion, some push buttons, and a bunch of connectors for all the IO capabilities that this RF unit offers. So it's a really easy to work with unit. I wanna show you how the software uh, works with it as well and do some simple demonstrations. So first I'm gonna start up the software. It's called XCTU, Configuration and Test Utility Software. When that starts up, we will go to the upper left-hand corner and click on the Add Radio Module button, which asks us with which communication network to use, uh, which COM port. We're using the USB serial port. I'm gonna keep all the default settings. When it starts up, we click once on this and you'll see a bunch of parameters in the right-hand pane begin to populate. These are all the various parameters that are inside the radio units themselves and are stored in flash memory. Perhaps the most important parameter to look at right now is the network ID, which currently is set to 7FF0. By default, it is 7FFF. It has a range from 0 to 7FFF, which is 15 bits or 32,768 possibilities. <clears throat> this network ID is essentially a channel that radio units must share in order to communicate with each other. These are spread spectrum frequency hopping radios. They are fully digital. And so these network IDs provide you the ability to have uh, selected modules talk to each other privately over their own network channel while not interfering with the others. What this means is that any modules you wish to have communicate with each other must share the same network ID. So we're going to keep this 7FF0. I happen to have two other of these modules plugged into other computers in my room, and they are also set for network ID of 7FF0. There are many, many other parameters here. We will not talk about them all. Suffice to say, this thing has a lot of capabilities. What I'm going to do to demonstrate how it works is use a simple utility here they provide for us called Serial Console. And the Serial Console is exactly what you would expect it to be. It's a terminal console that allows you to send and receive ASCII text data. So to begin using this, I will click the open button up here that establishes my serial connection between my PC and the locally connected uh, Digi radio module. Then to send a string of text, I'll click that button right there to add a packet. I will type in a simple string of text like hello and click add packet. If I click this button over here, send selected packet, it transmits that packet of information out over the airwaves and is received by the other radio units that are set to the same network ID. You can see up here in the console log, the hello and the exclamation mark appear over here as a series of hexadecimal characters and so this shows you the hex decoding for each of the uh, ASCII codes for each character there. I can also do this. If I want to repeatedly send out a message, I can click this to loop infinitely and click start sequence. As you can see, it's broadcasting this at half second intervals. That's a very useful troubleshooting tool if you want to set up one of these to repeatedly transmit a message while you walk over and check the reception on another unit. So you'll have to trust me when I say that the other two units have both received these messages, a string of hellos. So any RF modules that are set to the same network ID will receive and display any text that's broadcast by any one of them. So it's essentially a broadcast serial network. So what I'm going to do now is walk over to the other two computers and on each one of them, I'm going to start the start sequence loop for each of the modules and have them start to broadcast messages. I have set those messages to be northeast and northwest respectively because that's where the other two computers and modules are in my room to distinguish them from each other. I have their loop sequence uh, intervals set for 2000 milliseconds. So every two seconds, I'm gonna have them broadcast their own message. So hang tight. I'm gonna walk over to the other computers and start those messages and you will begin to see 
those received messages appear here on the console log. And you can see a string of text here, all in the color red. Uh, one string says Northeast module, the other says Northwest module. They're both set to broadcast at two second intervals. And it looks like the actual starting times are fairly closely synchronized, which is why you see the two messages appearing in rapid succession, followed by a pause, followed by another rapid succession. It just happens to be when I started each one. But the idea is the, these two modules are independently broadcasting their text messages and both are received by the module I'm plugged into with the computer I'm shooting the video on. Now, if I wanted to add my own message in here, my hello message, uh, just for fun, I'll set it to the same interval for transmitting and I'll loop that infinitely. And so now you see my outgoing message showing up in blue, the incoming messages showing up in red. So a very simple demonstration of sending text information back and forth using these modules. Now, of course, we can do far more with these modules than just use the serial console built into the XCTU software. Once configured, we can connect input and output pins on those modules to any device with a UART serial transceiver and use that to send and receive serial data, for example, to and from a microcontroller or any other device that understands RS-232 <coughs> uh, UART serial formatting. So these are very useful modules. Uh, this is simply a demonstration here using the XCTU software and the built-in serial console. Now there are some caveats I thought I would mention here, and it took me a little while to figure this out. I'm gonna stop my transmit sequence here and I'm gonna close my serial console. And that has to do with configuring the radio, uh, specifically updating and editing certain parameters here in this list. I found out uh, after much trial and error that if you have any of these digi modules transmitting in the same room and you try to make updates here, even if they're on a different channel, there's some interference that goes on and you often have trouble. Oftentimes your attempts to write new parameter values to your local module will end up in failure. And uh, yeah, it's frustrating. Another thing I've noticed too is you should not be updating and writing any parameters here, if the serial console itself is open, even if there's no other units transmitting, the serial communication, apparently there's some conflict there, where if you try to write parameter values with, with the serial console open, you can sometimes get errors. So what I have found is the most uh, reliable way to edit the parameters in the module, to change the values and then click on the right, or on the uh, little uh, right setting, icon to the right hand side, either one of those. The best way to do it is in a room that is radio quiet with no other modules transmitting and with your serial console closed. You do that, life's gonna be just fine. If you don't do that, uh, you'll be like me pulling some hair out and wondering why you keep having configuration problems. Anyway, these are, like I said, inexpensive units, pretty easy to use, uh, generally like them and wanted to show a quick demonstration of how they can be used to send and receive serial messages.